G'day, g'day, and welcome to Comics Mate, your mates in comics from the land down under. I'm Dean James, and today we're talking about the new Ultimate Universe that has recently been introduced by Marvel Comics. With Marvel in the absolute state it's been in these last few years, it was understandable that many fans, myself included, were iffy at best about this news. So I've deliberately waited until the first issues from the three announced series were released and I could give you my thoughts on them as well as a quick rundown on what this new Ultimate Universe even is. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I'll jump right into this. For those of you who don't know, the Maker, who is the old Ultimate Universe version of Reed Richards' Mr. Fantastic, who has now turned evil, created this new universe using time travel to create a world where none of the superheroes develop their powers, effectively stealing their destinies from them. For example, he killed the radioactive spider so that it would not be able to bite Peter Parker, meaning Peter has lived a normal life well into his 30s, but we'll get into that in a minute. On top of that, he has recruited a few of the more powerful villains in the universe to be his cabal of rulers, secretly controlling everything in this new world from the shadows. Announced back in November of 2023, Marvel let everyone know there would be a new set of number ones for all of our classic favourites, starting off with Spider-Man, Black Panther and the X-Men. And now that the first issue of all of these series has been released, and I've read them all, I will give you my thoughts and let you know if I think they're any good. So in no particular order, here's my thoughts on Ultimate Black Panther, Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate X-Men so far. You Bombay! You Bombay! You Bombay! Written by Brian Hill with art by Stefano Caselli, the story is definitely engaging and the art isn't bad at all. Pretty standard modern comic book superhero style, nothing particularly bad stood out to me so it's overall pretty good. Ultimate Black Panther is probably the character who hasn't really been too affected by the maker. He still very much feels like a combination of the classic 616 Black Panther and the MCU Black Panther. A lot of the changes are mostly to characters surrounding T'Challa and Wakanda as a whole, specifically Okoye being his wife slash the queen of Wakanda, with his sister Shuri taking her place as the leader of the Dora Milaje. There were some new characters also introduced in the first issue, that I'm still not sure what to think of them. The group of mystics known as the Vodou Khan, which seem to be some sort of counsel for Wakanda that T'Challa's father T'Chaka recommends he go and speak to at the beginning of the book. As of right now, they could go either way, but it seems like the writers are setting up a possible antagonistic relationship between them and T'Challa. On top of that, you get to see Killmonger, who looked pretty sweet in his brand new costume, and possibly Storm, who is his partner that he calls Windrider. I particularly like the design of T'Challa when he's not in the costume. He looks kind of like Michael J. White to me, which I thought was really cool. One thing I didn't like, though, is the costume for Black Panther itself. The book ends with T'Challa jumping into action as Black Panther after a terrorist attack on Wakanda, but for some reason they give the mask this weird-looking mouth hole which just looks silly if I'm being honest. Whether you love him or hate him, you have to admit Black Panther's costume is one of the more iconic and easy-to-recognize costumes in the entire Marvel Universe. It's basically perfect and doesn't need to be changed, especially when the change is something that looks so dumb. Overall, it's a pretty good setup for what's to come, and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes from here. Ultimate X-Men Issue 1 is by far the weirdest book in this lineup, and is definitely the one that changes the most. To be honest, it doesn't really feel like an X-Men book at all. It feels more like a horror manga, which might be why I liked it, because I'm a massive fan of Junji Ito. But there is nothing in here that feels remotely X-Men, so I won't be surprised if half the audience hates it, because it's definitely not what you're expecting when you pick up a book titled Ultimate X-Men. The entire book is written and drawn by Peach Momoko, who is not a fan favourite by any stretch of the word. Her artwork is very hit or miss, depending on the page, sometimes having great and terrible panels right next to each other. And her style is amateurish at best. It's very manga, with simple character designs and watercolours exemplifying a very Japanese-style story. She has worked with Marvel in the past on the book Demon Wars, which just like this was basically a watercoloured manga with an Asian female protagonist. It was okay, wasn't the worst thing I'd ever read, but was by no means a great story. Which is what leads me to worry that she might just be doing another self-insert, this time with Haseko, also known as Armor, in this quote-unquote X-Men book. But that still remains to be seen. The book opens with Haseko walking to school on what is revealed to be her middle school graduation day. We quickly learn that she has no friends and is seen by the other kids as weird and creepy. It's at this graduation that she is given a note from a mysterious friend that wants her to meet him at the temple on the mountain behind the school. She reluctantly agrees to go more out of curiosity than anything else, but when she gets there, there doesn't seem to be anybody waiting for her. 
After waiting for a while, she notices a boy watching her from the forest line, who quickly disappears, but is revealed to be her now dead friend Tsubasa. She thinks she is seeing things and decides to leave when she is stopped by a creepy shadow. Possibly the Shadow King? Considering this is supposed to be an X-Men book, but that's not confirmed one way or the other. He greets her but doesn't introduce himself. Instead, it is heavily implied that he is somehow Tsubasa, who is now a creepy shadow thing. He gives her a talisman that was once given to her by Tsubasa before he died, and after taunting her for a few pages, he disappears without a trace. It's then that the ghost of Tsubasa surprises her from behind, floating menacingly in the air, in what is a very creepy scene. Hence why I mentioned Junji Ito before. This is playing out much more like a horror manga than it is a superhero comic book. She escapes on her bike, haunted by what she has just seen, when she is nearly hit by a car, which is stopped in its tracks by her mutant ability, or maybe it's the talisman. It's honestly not clear whether this is her mutant ability or some sort of supernatural thing. The armor, which in this version looks more like a monstrous samurai than the bubble-like suit that we're all used to seeing, protects her from the car. The book ends with her returning to where she saw the ghost yesterday, and this time is greeted by her dead friend, who doesn't really say a lot to her before she is interrupted by a phone call from someone at her school, presumably another student. And that's literally how the book ends. Very little happens in it outside of some character introductions and some spooky imagery. I really don't know what to think of this. It's not a bad book, but it definitely isn't an X-Men book either. I can see a lot of people being disappointed in it, but if you like horror mangas, I'm sure you won't hate it. It's a good little setup. Now this one is the main reason I wanted to make this video in the first place. Spider-Man is one of those characters that everybody knows and everybody loves, but has been severely lacking in the comics for a good decade now. The people working at Marvel just don't know what to do with Spider-Man and are far more concerned with... other things. But I'm happy to say that Jonathan Hickman continues to be a beacon of hope in the otherwise dreadful dystopian nightmare that is the Marvel Universe for the past decade. It truly feels like the Spider-Man that's been missing, the one fans have been clamouring for these most recent years. At the time of making this video, unlike the others, there is already two issues out of Ultimate Spider-Man, so I'm going to talk about them both. And damn does Hickman nail it with Ultimate Spider-Man. The first issue picks up with Peter in his 30s, married to Mary Jane, and father to two kids, Richard and May. When Peter gets to work, he is met with the familiar sight of J. Jonah Jameson shouting, PARKER! But it isn't Peter he is looking for. It's Uncle Ben, who is still alive and works at the Bugle too. Ben and JJ have my favourite back and forth in this entire book. They're bros, and it's great. We also learn that Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, is the owner of the Daily Bugle in this universe. After this introduction, we follow Peter to a memorial where Father Murdoch, yes, it's Matt Murdoch who isn't Daredevil, but a religious leader giving a speech about a terrorist attack that took place years ago. The details I won't spoil, but we do learn that Aunt May was one of the victims who tragically passed that day. Later that night, we see the Kingpin is leaving the office when his car is blown up in an attack by the new Green Goblin, whose identity is currently unknown, considering we learned that Norman Oz was also killed in the terrorist attack years ago. Finally, we see Peter at home late at night with MJ, where he explains he needs to do something important. I won't spoil the hows and whys, but he now has a radioactive spider that he has been told is supposed to bite him, making him a hero. So he goes out to the roof of the building after everybody has gone to bed and lets it happen, ending the book with him about to go out for his first night as everybody's favourite friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man. I genuinely love this first issue of Ultimate Spider-Man. As I said earlier, it very much felt like the Spider-Man who has been sorely missing from Marvel Comics these last few years. If I was to criticise anything, and this goes for all these issues if I'm being honest, is that they were too short. I really think that Marvel should have made all of these issue ones giant sized, so they wouldn't feel so much like prequels to the actual story, like you would get in a Zero issue. But luckily there's already two issues of Ultimate Spider-Man out, and that is where we get to see some true Spider-Man action in its finest form. In issue two, we have Spider-Man rocking a sleek all black suit, and taking on his first criminal which is of course, the Shocker. Peter has some great moments in this issue, and some pretty funny moments too. There's this great interaction between him and the Shocker where he gets blasted off a roof two nights in a row, because he is so naive that he takes the Shocker's word not once, but twice. The first time, the Shocker tells him that he has convinced him that he should change his ways, and that he's going to be heading home instead of breaking into a bank, before blasting him off the roof. Then again, the next night, he tells Spider-Man that he's just desperate because he needs the money to help his wife, to which Spider-Man replies, oh, I'm so sorry, wait, 
is that true? And the Shocker replies with, what do you think? Before blasting him off the roof for a second night in a row. This actually made me laugh out loud the first time I read it. The second half of the book shows that his daughter, who sees a photo of this new Spider-Man in all black on the front page of the newspaper, is scared of him. So when she accidentally catches him on their couch eating some food, she almost bursts into tears out of fear. Which leads to a really cute moment where he reveals his identity to her and bribes her with ice cream so she doesn't tell her mum. The book ends the next night where Peter is sneaking home late at night, where he sees a picture that May drew for him, a blue and red spider, which we can only assume leads to him creating the classic red and blue suit we all know and love. You can probably tell that Ultimate Spider-Man is by far my favourite of these three new books in the Ultimate Universe. It's honestly great. Hickman's writing is fantastic and Marco Cecchetto's art is incredible, but they are all pretty good in their own ways, and I will definitely be following them all moving forward. I just hope Marvel doesn't pull some of its modern day bullshit with a bait and switch of ham-fisted politics in any of these books. If I had to rank them, I'd say Spider-Man is obviously number one, Black Panther being a solid second, with X-Men being third if for no other reason than it's so damn weird. Either way, they all get a recommend from me. If you're a fan of any of the characters in here, you could definitely do worse when going for a new story to follow. And I'm genuinely excited to see where Marvel's new Ultimate Universe goes from here. But what do you think of this new Ultimate Universe? Have you given up on Marvel for good, or are you willing to give this new universe a try? Either way, that's all I have for you today. My name's Dean James, your mate in comics from the land down under. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.